es así como la tienen las demás, quién sabe, hasta acá metido en actos de corrupción, la han hecho caer. This is Zoe Alexandra with People's Dispatch. I'm here in Ayacucho, Peru. For the past two weeks, the people of Peru have been on the streets, on the highways, blocking major roads, closing airports, all protesting the coup against democratically elected President Pedro Castillo, calling for resignation of the coup-led government of Dina Boluarte, a closing of the Congress, and a constituent assembly immediately. Here in Ayacucho, there was a massacre on December 15th. Ten young people were killed by the military and police. Uh, reports from human rights organizations show that the military used live bullets on protesters. Uh, some of them, some of those who were killed were even just on their way back from work. There's a lot of worry here and in the rest of Peru about these human rights violations. Um, they've been demanding that there be justice. Meanwhile, Dina Boluarte told mainstream media on Sunday that uh, these crimes would be judged by military court. This has been actually rejected since then by members of the military, but the tension continues in Peru. On December 7th, Pedro Castillo was overthrown in a legislative coup carried out by the country's right-wing dominated Congress. Castillo's forcible removal and illegal arrest brought tens of thousands of citizens into the streets demanding structural changes to the country's political system. These protesting citizens mostly belong to the long-neglected countryside of Peru and who feel deeply represented by Castillo. For the past two weeks, since December 7th, indigenous and peasant communities, popular movements, social organizations, student associations and trade unions have been organizing demonstrations and roadblocks and occupying local airports in different parts of the country. They are demanding the release and reinstatement of Castillo, the resignation of the de facto president Dina Boluarte, the dissolution of the right-wing dominated Congress, fresh parliamentary elections and the establishment of a constituent assembly to change the country's 1993 constitution. The Boluarte government has responded to this social uprising with a strong security clampdown including the declaration of a state of emergency at the national level and deployment of armed soldiers and police officials. According to Peru's National Human Rights Coordinator, as of December 23rd, 27 protesters had died because of violent repression by public security forces. Apart from this, 60 serious hospitalizations and 113 arbitrary arrests have also been reported. Salimos el apoyo, hacer un apoyo por nuestro país, por nuestro Perú. Salimos apoyando, reclamando nuestros derechos. Pensábamos uh, lograr, pero lamentablemente, eh, mi hijo Jonathan Alarcón Galindo fue impactado con la bala. Los inocentes, los humildes, llegaron a Guamanga para qué? Para que se bañen, para que están bañados con la sangre. Quedamos un destrozado, mi hijo luchando por su pueblo, luchando por su país, humilde, hijo, era humilde, no era un delincuente, no era ninguna persona, el único hijo era un campesino. Dina Boluarte's government has repeatedly labeled the protesters terrorists to delegitimize the widespread opposition to her rule. The mainstream media in the country is acting as an accomplice to this. They have called protesters vandals, criminals, terrorists, they have published unverified reports alleging that protesters have been using weapons and have links to criminal groups and always emphasize the disruption to daily life caused by the protests. But the violence by state security forces is not being highlighted. However, in the face of intensifying protests, Peru's Congress has approved a bill to advance general elections by two years to April 2024. In order to take effect, the bill must be ratified in a second vote in the coming months. Meanwhile, Castillo continues to be imprisoned in the Barbadillo prison in capital city Lima. Outside the prison, a group of supporters is maintaining a permanent vigil, expressing their support for the ousted president. The demands continue to be very strong in a, against this coup government, calling for a renovation of this political system that excludes the majority of Peruvians, excludes the indigenous, the peasant people, the people who live outside of Lima, and really just calling for a 
a new system where they're able to participate. We'll be following these protests as they continue, as people continue to demand uh, that there be justice, that there be a new government, that the people have a say in what happens uh, in Peruvian politics and society.